story that broke just a, a half an hour ago. Veteran leader of the ANC and president of the Umkonto Wasizwe Military Veterans Association, which has now been disbanded. Kebi Mapatswe passing away. Kebi Mapatswe, of course, a former deputy minister of defense as well. We're joined by our politics editor, Spu Ngawa. Spu, good afternoon to you. I've got to tell you, this news has come out of nowhere. No one is expecting this. Do, do we know very much at this stage? No, Stephen. Actually, it is quite a shocker, uh, including for some of his comrades. Um, a while ago, I spoke to um, Kalni House, and Kalni House was actually saying that he had also just had, and for what they understand that um, KB had complained about not feeling well and had taken a nap, but uh, never, uh, never rose from, from, that, from that nap. So basically, it's still fresh. Um, some of his comrades are still trying to react to it, and I guess most people are trying to uh, piece together his life and find the meaning of uh, Kebi Mapatswe to the ANC and also um, to the MKMVA, knowing the fact that uh, at the time of his death, actually, he was at loggerheads with some of his uh, for, uh, former comrades, including the likes of Carl Nehaus. Um, I mean, well, it's, it's, there's so many different things to say at this moment. This is just one of those reminders of how awful COVID-19 has been. We don't know that he passed away from that, but I'm just saying this sort of season of the pandemic that we've been living through. Um, no matter which way you look at it, and some people will say that he played a very divisive role in our politics, he certainly played a long role in our politics. He was in exile many, many years ago. Look, the reality is that with most um, um, ANC leaders who had gone to exile, he has actually gone through the long haul. You know, he was he spent time, he trained, I think, uh, in the former Soviet Union. He spent time in Uganda, um, in, in, in the camps. I think he came back around the same time that the ANC was disbanded and spent a long time. In fact, even before that, he had been involved in ANC structures like your Soweto and, or ANC aligned structures, so to speak, the South African Youth Congress, I think the Soweto Youth Congress. So he does have a long track record um, in, in the struggle. And as we often do in this country, and I'm sure elsewhere, um, Stephen, when people pass on, we tend to remember them for the good things and the contributions um, that they have made, made. But you cannot separate him from the divisive um, factional battles of the ANC because if anything you can you can accuse him of anything what you cannot accuse him of is his unwavering support or his the lack of his unwavering support for the former president um, Jacob Zuma and it is interesting though that um, as the, at the time of his passing there was a fallout in the MKMVA because the ANC had taken a decision to disband the MKMVA so that they can form a unified structure which is made up of the MKMVA represented by KB, Kalni House and others and the MK Council which was meant to go to a unified Congress. So KB went into a meeting with the ANC officials and they agreed to the disbandment. In fact, um, it would be interesting to hear what Kalni House has to say um, about him because at the time um, they had fallen out as a result of that because some had felt that KB had uh, actually, uh, for a lack of a better word, sold out mm -hmm. to the ANC leadership, given the fact that um, he had agreed to the disbandment of the MKMVA. Uh, the one thing, and I mean, as I say, there will be people, as you say, who will criticize Kibi Mapatswe, but the one thing, uh, just to sort of reiterate your point, is that I always feel that he helped us do our jobs as journalists because he was always available and would always speak and would always, you know, defend his corner. He would uh, never come on and insult you necessarily in response. He would come and defend his corner. He was always available for that. He was always ready for the fight, in other words. Exactly, Stephen. But I think what also most people do not know is that, I mean, he acted, he was the deputy minister, I think, between 2012 and 2019, uh, or to, uh, uh, towards the end of uh, President Zuma's uh, era. I'm not sure whether he stayed on beyond the 2018 uh, reshuffle. But the point is that Kebima Pazwa as an MP, actually, his attendance rate of committee meetings was very high. He attended the meetings. So in terms of doing his job, you can't accuse him of not, uh, of not doing that. You may argue with his politics. You may argue with some of his viewpoints. We may argue about some of the fundamental positions he holds on our contemporary politics. But as a, as a, as a, in so far as his uh, dedication to uh, and how steadfast he was about his views, I think they, um, you, you, that's one character trait that uh, I would uh, attribute to him. Spoon Gawa, thanks very much indeed. Our politics editor, I do appreciate the time in a moment.